My name is Nako Nakatsuka. I'm a fourth year chemistry PhD student at UCLA, and today I'll be helping you guys out by going over some general chemistry concepts. And good luck with the course. Now let's discuss the relationship between temperature and reaction rates. So previously we discussed reaction rate versus concentration, right? By saying that the rate is equal to the rate constant and the concentration of, let's say, the reactants. But what about the reaction rate versus temperature? And so from experience, cooling slows down reactions, right? And that's why you put things in the fridge to preserve them. And so what determines the magnitude of the rate constant K in relation to temperature? So reactants must collide to react. And higher temperatures results in more collisions. So as you increase the temperature, the rate constant also increases and reactants must collide with enough energy to break bonds and to overcome an energy barrier. And this energy barrier is called activation energy, which is also written as E little a. And as activation energy increases, the rate constant decreases. And the reason for that is this energy barrier is higher meaning that it's harder for a reaction to happen. And so let me draw this out for you guys. So we have reactants going to some kind of transition state, which is also known as an activated complex, and this goes to products. And so reactants must have a correct orientation when they collide, and that frequency factor is also called a. So I'll write that down for you, frequency factor, which equals A. And so the frequency factor is the orientation that the reactants must have in order to collide efficiently. And as A is greater, K is also greater. And so if I draw an energy diagram, it would look something like this. We have energy on the y-axis and we have reaction progress on the x-axis. We start out by going from reactants to going to some kind of transition state and finally to products. As you can see, going from reactants to products, you have a lower energy value, which means that this is a favorable reaction. And so we go from reactants to the transition state to the products. And this gap, going from the reactants to the transition state, is the energy barrier, or the activation energy. And this difference in energy between the reactants and products is known as delta E, the change in the energy going from the reactants to the final product. So as you can see, if this activation energy was higher, a lot more energy has to get put into the reactants in order for them to collide, break bonds, and form new bonds to make products. So now let's look at a quantitative relationship between the rate constant and temperature. So if you look at this figure right here, you can see that the y-axis is the fraction of molecules and the x-axis is the kinetic energy. And you can see that the distribution is different when you compare the lower temperature with the higher temperature. And so some things we need to note is that the total number of molecules in the lower temperature and the higher temperature is constant. What that means is the area under T1, which let's say is the lower temperature, is equal to the area under T2, which is the higher temperature. Also, at T2 is greater than T1, since this is the higher temperature and this is the lower temperature, more molecules have higher energy. And this is evident by looking at this diagram, and you can see that there's more of the higher temperature guys in 
the higher energy range because this is increasing in kinetic energy. And so what this also means is that more molecules have energies that are greater than the activation energy because this line right here shows the minimum energy needed for the reaction, which is the activation energy. And so that's why the energy distribution at the higher T2 temperature is flatter and more spread out so that more molecules can have higher energy and more of them have an energy value that is greater than the activation energy. And this is called a Boltzmann distribution. And we can actually write this out as an equation as e to the power of negative Ea over Rt, where Ea is the activation energy, R is the gas constant, and T is temperature. And this gives the fraction of collisions with energy at the activation energy or greater at a certain temperature. And so from here we can get the Arrhenius equation which is something you'll need to know. And this is K, which is the rate constant, being equal to A, E to the power of EA over RT. So as you can see, this part is from the Boltzmann distribution. A we talked about before as being the frequency factor, which states that reactants must have the correct orientation when they collide, and so this is what determines that. And so this is also known as the pre-exponential factor since it comes before the exponential. And this includes the number of collisions. And so when we get this equation, we can also take the natural log of each side. And we get ln k equals negative Ea over Rt plus LNA. The reason why I moved the natural log of A to the other side is because now I can show you that this looks like Y equals MX plus B, where the Y-axis is LN rate constant, the X-axis is 1 over temperature, and so when I draw the slope, the slope is actually going to be negative Ea over R, which is right here. And that's where we got 1 over temperature as x. And then this point right here, since it's the y-intercept, would be LnA. So as you can see, if a reaction can be modeled using the Arrhenius theory, then a plot would be linear with a slope with the activation energy over the gas constant being negative. And so I wanted to finish off the kinetics chapter by talking about catalysis. And so what a catalyst does is it speeds up a reaction. And so what that means is it increases the rate constant by lowering the activation energy. And so a catalyst provides a new pathway for the reaction which has a lower activation energy. As you can see here, the blue going from reactants to products with this being the transition state, the usual reaction goes like so, where this is the activation energy. But after a, ca a catalyst is added, you get this red line where the activation energy is significantly lowered, making the reaction faster. And so another thing you have to remember is that catalysts are not consumed in the reaction. And we also have two types of catalysts. We have the homogeneous which means that the catalyst is in the same phase, or there's also heterogeneous, which means that the catalyst is in a different phase. And so catalysts are extremely important in kinetics because they don't get used up in a reaction, but they have the potential to lower the activation energy and speed it up. Never living in a house of cards Cause I build a mind with all my heart And I'm gonna make it through Doing what I do